Hey guys, hopefully I'm not too far away. I haven't actually tested this setup. We're just at a cabin out in the Smoky Mountains and I've set the camera on the dresser and I'm just sitting down a couple feet away. So hopefully you can actually see my face and it's clear enough. Today I wanted to just give a pregnancy update. I actually didn't do a 32 week pregnancy update. I figured I would just do a recap of the past two weeks. I'm 33 weeks now and I'll just kind of go over what's been happening. Overall, nothing too big has been happening except for right when I turned 32 weeks. It was a Saturday that we had our baby celebration and I was on my feet all day and hanging out with everyone and not drinking enough water and ended up getting kind of dehydrated. So the following day, it kind of continued into that where I was dehydrated. So I was trying to get a lot of fluids in, but I started having Braxton Hicks contractions like crazy, up to like six plus an hour. Immediately, as soon as that started happening, I noticed like, oh wow, I'm having these really frequently and this seems odd, this doesn't seem normal. So I knew that with Braxton Hicks, you know, it's hydrate and lay down and rest or rather like preventing preterm labor like if those things start to happen that's usually what will be recommended to you i talked to my midwife the following day on monday after i had basically spent much of the day trying to just rehydrate and rest and by the afternoon on monday i was back to normal and i was just having the normal amount of braxton hicks contractions which it's happening i'd say I mean, no more really than like one an hour, but they're not consistent. You know, I might go like three hours without noticing one and then have a couple in an hour. This is all good because I do want my uterus to be, you know, practicing and getting ready for the, for the birth that's coming up in what, seven weeks or so, somewhere around there, which is crazy. I can't believe it's coming that soon. Anyway, that kind of freaks me out. And I did actually end up checking my own cervix while the Braxton Hicks stuff was going on. And it was really soft, so I did a little bit of research because I wasn't sure if your cervix is supposed to be soft whenever you're pregnant. So I did talk to my midwife about that and she said that was that was totally fine as long as I wasn't dilated at all. And you don't want to be a face. So if you guys are familiar with what effacement is, your cervix is kind of like this and there's like the little hole at the bottom. But effacement is when it just gets less and less and less and it's thinning. So it's thinning and going like this to where it's like your baby's head will be right there and your cervix will, by the time you're in labor you and you're 100% effaced, it will be super thin, like very, very thin. And then the hole, which is your cervical opening, that's your dilation. So once you're fully effaced and it's super thin and then that hole gets bigger and bigger and bigger, that's your dilation. So when you're fully effaced and fully dilated, then the baby's ready to come out. All of that to say that everything's okay and everything's been back to normal, I haven't had any uh, incidents like that again and now I'm just being really really careful to drink plenty of fluids and other than that I'm still having the lower back issues I've been making sure to go to the chiropractor once a week when we've been in town we've, we're actually out of town right now this week but I'm going once a week and I may start actually going twice a week or just kind of sporadically as I need it because my back is still, it does get out of place a lot. I wanna make sure the baby has full range of motion while they're in my womb. And if your back's like all locked up and, and your muscles are, ah, you know, tight like that, then the baby can't move around as much. So I want them to be able to stretch out and, and that's important for their development too because their body, like in their brain, how they're making connections, they need to be able to move around. And granted, obviously they're gonna get tighter and tighter as they get bigger, but it's all part of the process that you want things aligned. I may even actually start doing prenatal massage. Someone does offer that at my chiropractor's office. So I might start doing that, try it out once, kind of see if it makes a big difference. If it does, I'll probably do that a few times before the birth. One cool thing is that if my back does lock up during labor, my chiropractor uh, or his wife, they're both chiropractors, they have a practice together. They will come to your house and adjust you while you're having your baby, which is going to really come in handy if my back locks up because I mean, when it gets messed up, it's so uncomfortable to walk around and I need to be able to walk around obviously while I'm having a baby. <laughs> and I like to be mobile. I like to be walking around moving. Um, when I had Axel, I didn't get in the birth tub until a little more than an hour before he was born, maybe an hour and a half maximum until he was born. Uh, so that all the other time I was kind of bouncing around on a birth ball, walking up and down the halls. I was able to be mobile, which made all the difference in the world with the intensity of the labor and everything. I was able to just kind of do what my body felt like doing and I was able to eat and yada, yada, yada. So all these things 
need my back to be in order and good. I'm needing to eat more protein because I feel jittery really easily now. And if it's been like three or four hours since I've eaten protein, I start just feeling like really uncomfortable, like kind of like that RLS, restless leg syndrome in your legs that, I don't know if you've ever experienced that, but it's so uncomfortable. You just feel like, like you're gonna jump out of your skin. That's how I feel if I don't eat protein often enough. So actually, as soon as we get back to Texas, uh, we're in Tennessee right now. As soon as we get back to Texas, I'm gonna cook up a bunch of soups. Like I said in a previous video, I still haven't done that. So I can just grab it out of the fridge or the freezer, heat it up, done and eat it. And it will be a good source of protein and veggies, minerals. Um, I think that's going to be so crucial for me over these, these next six to eight weeks. What else? Hmm. Oh, also I think I'm definitely calcium deficient. I'm having like some achy joints and my teeth are sometimes hurting and I have not been staying on top of my vegetable intake whatsoever. Like I've not been eating hardly any green veggies. I'm actually going to go and do a little bit of research, kind of figure out which is the best calcium option for as far as supplements are concerned because I've read some mixed things about taking calcium supplements. So I want to make sure that I'm taking the best thing that I can and then do that as little as possible so I can kind of get whatever I'm missing and then start substituting in that the vegetables so that I can get rid of the supplements because obviously getting your nutrition from your food is much more optimal than getting it from a pill because the pill is the extracted mineral or vitamin or whatever and your body is used to assimilating food with all these different micronutrients together and there's a whole process that it goes through to do that so when you're just taking a pill it's not the same thing so you can't expect like oh I'm just gonna eat crap and I'm just gonna take this vitamin it's gonna be the same thing it's not that's just not how it works I like to take as little supplements as possible I am taking some supplements I'm totally going off on a tangent right now <laughs> maybe I should save this conversation for a different video and I'll talk about what supplements I am actually taking. So yeah, we'll go ahead and do that. Everything has been pretty good. I mean, I'm sleeping okay. I'm uncomfortable because of the back issue. Sometimes I am really out of breath, like the baby will get in a certain position and I'll be like, oh, I can't breathe, oh, oh, I'm dying. Sometimes getting on hands and knees position um, and letting my back sag like this helps because I guess the baby's just, the pressure is being taken off of whatever organs and stuff are they're smushing up against. So I do that sometimes. And other than that, it's just kind of moving around until I get into a position where I'm comfortable and can get adequate oxygen. So I guess that is it for my 33 week pregnancy update. I, I can't believe we're already at 33 weeks, but here we are, and I am getting super excited about meeting this baby. Which, by the way, if you don't know the gender of this baby, you can click up here to see the gender reveal video because I'm about to say it. So if you don't want me to say it before you watch that video, go ahead and click it. But we are having a baby girl, which is crazy! Axel is getting more excited now. But initially he was not excited. He was like, what is happening? This is awful. But you know, that's just, he's a boy and he's older and he's kind of just like, what is going on? What's going on in my world? It's, things are crazy. But we understand and he, we've been working with him and encouraging him and trying to get him more excited about the fact that he's gonna have a baby sister. And he's definitely improved since we first found out and before we had found out because he was like, I can't have a baby sister, I'll freak out, I'll freak out. But he's warming up to the idea, even like coming over and saying hi to my belly and like, hey baby, which is so sweet and makes my heart so happy because we were just really concerned about this whole thing. Like, what is he gonna do? He's just a very, very uh, opinionated and interesting child. And because he's older and he's just now being introduced to a sibling here and you know whenever the baby's born it's going to be his first sibling and he's six and a half this is a whole new world for him he's been i mean if we're going to be honest he's kind of been like the center of the universe uh up until now for his dad and i so this is a big shift and it's understandable that you would be kind of freaked out about introducing a new baby who's going to be taking your parents attention to an extent overall we'd say he's doing really really well we're really proud of him and uh, we're just excited for them to meet and for us to meet this new baby and expand our family. So thank you for watching and please come back and I will try to get a 34 week pregnancy update 
recorded soon so you guys can keep up to date with what's going on. So I'll talk to you later. Bye. 33 weeks. Oh, oh yeah. Getting big. Looking better and better. All right. <laughs> Bye guys.